In this video, we're going to explore the load shape feature inside 3D Coat's ePanel. This allows you to bring in vector shapes or have 3D Coat convert grayscale images to splines. Now, obviously, when you're trying to create a spline, you want to use something that's pretty clearly defined as opposed to gradient texture. So let's choose something like this gear and we have a dialog that allows us to place it either according to the viewport or we can change it to curve on plane in space in this case I have ZX plane chosen so it sits atop this rectangle however by default it will be oriented along a viewport so let's go back to ZX plane and you could also place curve to current pick point but in this case what I did is I just chose curve center and space manually and I changed the value here so that it sits atop this object so when you're happy with it you can hit OK now we have a gizmo to where we can scale it and move it even further if you like but for now what I want to do is use the plane tool to cut into this individual object. Now when using the plane tool I want to quickly mention if you don't see the plane then the first thing you want to look at is this pick plane scale. If it's at zero you won't see the plane so you may want to change that. Now if you use the bracket keys like you do in Photoshop to increase or decrease your brush size you'll notice how the plane size will scale with your brush. Now with that stated, let's see just how deep this is going to cut into this object by tilting the object at an angle. It's sitting just above it right now, but I want it to go further into the object. And what I'll do is I'll hit the plus key on the number pad, and that's going to push it further and further away from the initial pick point. If I hit the minus key on the number pad, it's going to pull closer and closer to the original pick point. You could also do that here, forward and back, but the problem with that is you can't see it while you're clicking on it, so it's best to use the hotkeys for this purpose. We can also define how this plane is oriented by choosing whether we want right mouse button by three points, four points, and so on. But the purpose is not to go over the plane tool in depth, but just to point out what I'm doing here. And um, you can also choose your uh, pick point in forward direction is going to be looking toward the camera. That's not what I want in this case. So I want to choose pick point in direction. I'll right click. And again, I'm going to hit the plus key and I can increase the increments here if I want that will make it go deeper into the object much more quickly so let's go a little bit deeper another option is you can ghost your layer to see it a little bit more clearly but I think just bringing it to the edge serves the same purpose so now you may opt to go ahead and save your spline so that you can load it later on if you like but in this case what I'm going to do is if I were to go ahead and hit the enter key it's going to cut based on the screen angle and that's not what I want here I want to go to an orthographic view top view and now I'm going to hit the enter key and I'll hit escape and come out of orthographic view now let me try one other trick here and I'm going to undo and I'm going to choose vox hide rather than plane voxel hide is a really neat little tool that you can use to not only hide parts of your object but 3D Coat will actually allow you to either delete the hidden part later on 
or you can have 3D Coat separate it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do the same thing though. We're going to go to an orthographic view, top view, and when I hit the enter key, it's going to hide all the way through. Now, you may not want to go all the way through, and so you do have an option for on plane. However, just for demonstration purposes, we'll stick with what we have here. But yeah, with the Vox Hide, you have two different ways that you can set the depth. You can use depth limit, but the problem is you don't necessarily have any visual indication before you commit the operation. So you, you kind of have to do a little bit of trial and error when using this method. Whereas on plane, you can use it the same way you did with the plane tool by checking this on plane option. So let's hit the escape key to drop that and we can see the result. Now, with this hidden like this, we can go to the geometry menu and we can choose objectify hidden. What 3D Coat did is it separated that into its own part. All right, so let's go to this base object here and I'm going to go to the bottom of the tool panel and click smooth all a few times. And if I want to create a little bit of separation, I can right click on the gear and choose extrude, have a negative value, so I'll hit OK. If I need to extrude a little bit more, I'll do that again and smooth that. So yeah, let's look at one additional example here. So what I'll do is go to new. We'll start with a new scene. I'll scale this out, squash it, hit apply. I'll step out temporarily and let's go to our load shape. This time I'm going to bring in an EPS file and you can see the different file formats that you can bring in. If you happen to use Adobe Illustrator or maybe Affinity Designer where you're working with vector graphics, then you can save an EPS file from those applications and that spline will come right into 3D Coat just as it was in your application. All right, so I'll scale it down a bit and let's make that 30. That's about right. I hit OK. And if I want, again, I can rotate it. I probably should be oriented, again, in an orthographic view, top view, so that it doesn't distort the angle along any other given axis. But for now, this should work just fine. What I can do is use extrude and we'll load our shape. Hit OK. Let's extrude it outward first. Let me undo and let's change our border width. It's probably a bit too soft. We need to change our fall off value because we want a nice crisp extrusion and I'm going to change my brush alpha as well to a hard edge brush alpha. And we can change how it's extruded along the view direction, along the Y, and that's exactly what I'll choose here. Okay, so let me undo that. This time I'll invert the tool action, or I could hold down the control key as I hit the enter key. I'll hit escape. Okay, so that's a quick look at using the load shape feature in 3D Coats ePanel. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.